Daniel here for Tabletop for One, and I welcome you back to another Tabletop for One podcast as I talk about the latest games and crowdfunding, as well as new arrivals on my doorstep and new games that I've played. Now, I do want to let you know that any games listed in this episode, I will have links for those games in my description so that you can check them out at your convenience. All right, so let's jump right in and talk about some of the latest games on crowdfunding. And so first off, we're going to jump over to GameFound, and this will be the only GameFound game that I'll mention in this episode, and this is Inferno. There's actually two games on GameFound, both with the same kind of theme. One is called Dante, and the other one's called Inferno, uh, coincidentally. Uh, But uh, this is an interesting-looking game. I'm not sure too much about it. Now, uh, Will Brown, my friend, the Hungry Gamer, he has reviewed this game or previewed this game. So if you want to check videos out on that, check out the Hungry Gamer. But it almost looks like a Euro-style game with the Dante's Inferno theme. And so that sounds interesting. Uh, the, the color scheme is kind of off for me. The, this game I would expect to be a little more dark. It's very bright and colorful. So it doesn't look like it's you know dealing with the Inferno at all. But it does look interesting. I'm not sure if it would be a game that I would back. Uh, it, you know, it comes in at like $120. Well, I guess that's the bigger edition, but the the, the regular uh, deluxe edition is at around $85. So that's a big price to pay. I'm Yeah, I'm just not sure about this game personally. It does look interesting. It'd be one that I'd want to try, but not one I'd want to back. All right, so let's head on over to kickstarter.com and check out some of the games there. And this one, uh, this one's called Forge Flame. Now, this one took me by surprise because, you know, at first I was like, what is this game? Like, I don't even know anything about it. And then I noticed it was one to four players and it has some really fun art, some bright, colorful art. And it looks like you're mining resources and you're carrying them. What's really cool about this game is that you actually carry the resources on your miniatures. And so that's kind of cool. I think you can carry up to three resources on the miniatures. So it just kind of adds a little bit to the theme and the immersion, I guess. But it looks to be like a deck builder kind of game. And it kind of reminds me a little bit of Clank, I guess. But you're trying to uh, carry these resources to the forge and then use the forge to forge artifacts. And of course, you know, have the most points. Now the solo mode is a beat your own score solo mode, it looks like. Uh, It has different solo cards. There's additional ones being unlocked in the stretch goals. Uh, The price is actually really good. So the price is sitting in at $54 with $14 for shipping. So that price doesn't seem too bad because it comes with miniatures. And yeah, it it looks really good. It looks really good. You can can spend more money and get more gameplay by having different characters and stuff. And now, of course, I'm not going to back it because I'm not backing games right now. But it does look like a game that I'd like to play. It it looks fun. And and I'd I'd like to see, you know, if it comes to retail and then maybe pick it up at a later time. All right, so the next one up is called The Mark. Now this is actually a reprint of a previous game and it's a small box game and so they have a new expansion called the Upgrades and it's not actually doing well. So it's at $1,435 of $12,000. Now this is a small time publisher. It publishes only in the U.S. and does not ship outside the U.S. This is a game that I would normally support. Uh, You know, it looks fun. It looks like a resource management type game where you're converting resources in order to build these uh, different cards and different items. And so it looks really interesting uh, for a quick small box game. Looks very quick. It's got a solo mode. Yeah, everything about it looks good. And I think the reason why it's not doing so well is one, the cost. So for whatever reason, they decided to not actually sell the base game alone. And in order to get the game, you actually have to get it with the uh, expansion. And that's unfortunate, you know, because not everybody's going to want to go for that. So you're going to have to spend 28 bucks for the expansion plus the base game. And then it's going to be an additional $6 or so for shipping. And I think they would have done better just offering the base game as one of the pledges. I'm just not sure why they did. Now, there is a print and play reward for $5. Though, you know, I'm just looking at this and thinking this is not going to fund. They need a total of $12,000. And one of the other things is like the the photo at the front of the page, it doesn't really show anything. Yeah, I I think there was just some odd choices with the presentation of this particular campaign that really is leading to it not doing so well. I do hope they succeed. I'm not going to back this game, but 
I think it does look interesting for a small box game. So I hope they get that chance, but it doesn't look like it's going to happen. All right, moving on to Ascending Empires. Ascending Empires is a 4X game in space. And so this one, you know, the box looks awesome. I mean, the box looks really cool. I love the front of the box. And then I look at the game board and I'm like, eh, the game board's just kind of empty. It's got a bunch of circles on the game board to where you put little planet tokens or whatever. It doesn't look that impressive. Now, it's saying that it has tons of miniatures, like a hundred and something or I forget how many miniatures it is, but there's a ton of miniatures. Uh, but the miniatures, you know, just don't look super impressive. There's just a lot about this game that doesn't look that great. So definitely concerned about it. It does come with a solo mode, but I didn't really look into it much because it's also $110, which they say is $30 off the MSRP. And I don't know, $110? And then it says that it's going to be between $25 and $33 for shipping, but they actually don't have a set shipping rate. So it could even be more. So you're looking at like upwards of $150 for this game. And I just don't think it's there. I'm sorry. I just don't think it's there. I think be careful on backing this one. It doesn't look like the art was developed enough. I think too much emphasis was put on the miniatures. The cost is high. Yeah, there's just a lot of things about this that I would just avoid personally. All right, moving on to Dying Light, the board game. Now, I actually really liked the video game, Dying Light. I played the first one. It was a lot of fun. And so I was interested in this one. Now, Mark Dainty, a friend of mine from Not Board Gaming, he uh, has done a preview of this game, and he seemed to like it a lot. And so, yeah, this game, uh, you know, what's really neat about this it has an excellent table presence because there are actually little buildings. I think they're made out of cardboard that you put on there. So you have these terrain buildings because, you know, in Dying Light, there's, there's parkour as you're jumping from building to building, trying to avoid the zombie hordes. And so it looks really good. It's priced pretty well at $66 for the base pledge, uh, but it goes up, you know, double to get the deluxe pledge. And so here's the rub on this game. And you'll have to take a look at it yourself if you're backing this game. But be careful with the standees. See, the standees here look bland, similar colors. And yeah, there's something that it's just kind of a muddy graphic. So I can't imagine that it's going to be easy to tell them apart on the table. I think there's going to be some difficulty with that. Maybe the sizes are different, but some of those are going to look very similar to other ones on the board. And so, yeah, I'm kind of disappointed in the standees. Uh, it almost needs like an outline or something for the different standees or maybe different... Uh, you know, the little plastic stands having different colors, so it's easier to differentiate between the different types of zombies. Something like that. But the way it stands right now, I would not want the standee version just for that fact. Because the miniatures are actually different colors. And so they're a little bit easier to differentiate. So yeah, I definitely have some problem with the standees. So if you're looking for something that's more aesthetically pleasing and, you know, easier to look at on the table, it's going to cost you $120 for this deluxe pledge. And maybe that's worth it, you know, maybe that's worth it. It's, it's got a lot of, you know, different miniatures. It's got good gameplay. I, you know, it just, it looks fun. Now, personally, I don't need another zombie game. I have so many zombie games with Plum Island Horror and uh, Marvel Zombies coming in recently. I'm kind of just stocked up on zombie games. But if you're interested in Dying Light, this might be one to go for. And yeah, again, check out uh, Mark Dainty from Not Board Gaming. Check out his video. See if it's something you'd like. But yeah, Dying Light the board game. All right, so where are my Cascadia friends? Because the Cascadia has come out with a new Roll and Write version of the game. So we have Cascadia Rolling Hills, and then there's Cascadia Rolling Rivers. So there's actually two different versions of the game, and you can buy a single one or you can buy both of them together. Single one's going to set you back at $19. Both of them together, about $35. You get some promos for free. I don't think the promos are exclusive. They might sell those at a later date, but you get them for free if you back the Kickstarter. It is going to cost you a little bit of money for shipping. You're looking at $9, whether you buy one or both. So it's $9 for both or $9 for one. So that's not too bad. I think the shipping is fair on that. 
Now, the question is whether or not I need a Cascadia Roland Rhine. I don't know if I like the way it looks, but the gameplay does look fun, and uh, Slicker Drips has a good playthrough on it. Oh, and one other thing about this is I think they're expecting to deliver it in the summertime. So, like, they've already got it, you know, ready for production or whatever. It's ready to go or it's already started production, something like that. So, it's coming out in the summertime. It also has a solo scenario mode that you'll know from, like, Cascadia, where there are 20 different solo scenarios. So, there's a lot of good things about this. I, I would recommend it if you're a fan of Cascadia and the, the price is just right. All right, moving on to one that's really doing well. All right, so this one's called Biome, nature-themed board game for one to four players. It has $177,000 so far, 2,800 backers. That's quite a bit, really. Now, it almost looks like it's trying to mimic, you know, Wingspan a little bit or maybe Earth a little bit. It's got these cool little bird nests that are going to house, you know, some of the different uh, wooden components. Now, the one thing I'd like to say about those bird nests is those are digital renderings. And so when it comes to the actual, you know, production process, it's supposed to be straw nests. And so when it actually comes out, don't expect that kind of detail. I, I would highly doubt it's going to come out that detailed. It'll probably be something uh, looking more like a woven basket. <laughs> that, that would be my guess. Because trying to make that in production, I, I don't know that it's going to come out that way, especially for the price. Yeah, don't have your expectations too high on, uh, on those components. And so there's a couple of things I wanted to talk about this game. First, let's talk about the cost. All right, the cost is $49 for the early bird, which there's still 291 left of the early bird. Otherwise, it's going to be uh, $54. So, you know, that's not too bad of a price, I suppose. It jumps up another $15 or so to get the deluxe edition, which comes with uh, some upgrades like uh, screen printed meeples. But I have to tell you, the screen printed meeples, I don't think they look that great. Uh, you know, it's like, barely any screen printed on them it's just on the rabbits and the chicks and it just adds like a little wing and uh, an eye and that's about it and then it comes with uh, a mini expansion and it looks like maybe some custom trays honestly all that stuff doesn't feel like it's worth it to me personally so i would say if you're going to do this back the you know the regular edition save your money uh on the deluxe edition doesn't even seem worth it so just get the regular edition it already comes with wooden components and everything so no big deal there but yeah definitely watch out that that extra cost doesn't seem like it's worth it but let's talk about the gameplay here so like i said it looks kind of like wingspan it's got similar card layout to wingspan or wormspan it has a solo mode but here's the thing in this game there's a spinner there is coin flipping and there is dice rolling all those things i don't know about this <laughs> all right you're talking about random on random on random and in a game like this i'm thinking i wouldn't want that much random <laughs> you know it's like too much now i i guess the uh the spinner is a mini expansion, so you probably don't have to use it. But still, as you're activating cards, you're flipping coins and rolling dice. I don't know about that. And I'm not sure if that's the kind of game I would like. So just be aware that that's in there. If you like that sort of thing, then by all means, you know, this might be a game for you. You know, it, it looks decent. It's doing really well. I think the marketing on this has done it well. I don't know that there's a great game here. It, it looks like an okay game. It really does. It, it doesn't look like anything spectacular. No offense to the, the designers. But I, yeah, I don't, I don't think it's a game for me. But it might be a game for you. All right, so we're moving on. We have two more games left. And so the next one is called Chroma Arcana. Chroma Arcana is a sorcerer battle game. Now, one thing that caught my eye with this game is the art. The art looks fantastic. And as I understand, it is all hand painted or hand drawn. And so it looks fantastic. It looks amazing. I love the art in this game. Now, this is a, a dueling game, but uh, you can actually get a solo mode with it. Now, bear in mind, if you're back in this game, you have to back the bundle that includes the solo mode. It is not included in the base game. So if you want this solo mode, you'll have to buy the expansion. It's $50 for the solo co-op bundle that comes with the base game and that expansion. 
and it looks like you go up against a boss kind of thing and so you can play that together with others against the boss and so yeah it, it looks interesting I'm not sure on the solo mode because it's got behavior cards that have a lot of text and conditions so I'm not sure if that solo mode does well uh, but I love the art in this game I really do I really do the art looks so good yeah so definitely interested in this one definitely interested to see you know if people end up picking it up and what they think of it I, I definitely would wait for retail on it but it might be something that I'll pick up later all right as usual I saved the best for last <laughs> so this one it just started and it's called flow embark on a heroic journey across the iceberg sea oh my goodness all right so this is designed by henry audubon yoma and johnny pack and it's got art by andrew bosley and the art looks fantastic the game board looks so good there's so many good things going here it reminds me a bit of endless winter it's got some just some really fantastic looking components the gameplay looks really good all these things look really good it's you know co-designed with johnny pack and i think johnny pack's a fantastic designer and so yeah there's just a lot of really good things going here and the interesting thing about it it's got like a sandboxy kind of type gameplay where you know different thematic elements kind of help you navigate the rules and that sort of thing but it also also has introductory games kind of like what revive did that will gradually unveil the mechanics of the game i'm quoting what it says here on the kickstarter page ensuring a smooth learning curve for players while in introducing key concepts of the lore of the realm and so you have an unlocking system with different envelopes and you'll unlock new content as you reach certain milestones that sounds great i love unlocking content in board games i think it's something that we should see more often so that's great now the game has a race for a certain amount of points which you know is going to be similar to something like dune imperium so you're trying to get six hero points triggering the end game and then you have some secret cards that can score you more points at the end of the game the like i said the components look really good the deluxe components look really good too especially if you get the game trays with it and then they've got a free stretch goal expansion that's going to go for everyone and then there's also an additional monsters unleashed expansion that get integrated into the game with simplified set of rules and so that sounds really interesting so there's a lot of really good things about this i really love how this looks and then if you get the collector's edition which is like super expensive uh you're gonna get a bunch of realistic markers resin markers and stuff like that extra miniatures better looking dice and all sorts of things there's <laughs> just all sorts of things that you can get so let's talk about uh the solo mode now solo mode there isn't any information yet so it's going to be like Unconscious Mind and Endless Winter and Sweet Mess, but we don't know anything about it yet. Other than the fact that it has multiple difficulties and it can use all the expansions, modules, and unlockable content. Okay, definitely looking forward to seeing what else is said about the solo mode. Now the price of the game for the base game is going to come in at $71. So I don't think that's too bad based on the components and everything and the way it looks. Again, you'll get the stretch goals with that as well. And so, yeah, it looks pretty good for the price. This is a game that's tempting me to break my no backing rule. And again, it's designed by Johnny Pack, and I think Johnny Pack is fantastic. I backed his unconscious mind and looking forward to getting that this year. So yeah, I'm really tempted on this one. I think it's well worth a back. Again, I think looking at the, the base game, I'd probably just go with the base one, $71. I think that would be worth it. Looks to be plenty of content. Looks like a lot of fun. Yeah, so Flow is my pick of the week as the best Kickstarter out there right now. And I'm definitely curious if you ended up backing this game. You, along with 2,500 other backers at 288,000, they're doing so well. I'm really happy for them. And I think, I think I'm going to be really tempted on this one. All right, and so that's it for the crowdfunding games. Now let's talk about some of the games that I got in recently. And so I have a few games that came in recently. I have Aquatica and Furnace plus the Interbellum expansion. Both of those came in from Arcane Wonders as review copies. So I'm looking forward to reviewing both those games, reviewing their solo modes. I actually played Furnace tonight four player with three of my kids 
and had a blast. It is, it's a fun engine building game and it's very quick to play. You do four auctions, you do four production phases as you're trying to, you know, convert resources to other resources to convert them and sell them and get coins. And then your points at the end of the game are coins. And it's a lot of fun. So I'm looking forward to trying out the solo mode. I also received the new Table Golf Association game. And so Table Golf Association is coming out with a new edition. And so, yeah, I received a preview copy of that game. Can't wait to get it to the table. Table Golf Association is one of the best games that I reviewed last year. I love that game. It is so much fun. I can't wait to get it to the table. It's just, it's just such a blast to play. And yeah, it's, I love the production quality. I love the way you build the different courses. I love the way wind works. And I love, the, I love the way the golf balls work. It's just such a great game. So being able to preview this latest edition is going to be fantastic. Can't wait to get it to the table. And then I received the deluxe prototype of Conquest Princess. Now that campaign is over, but the designer wanted to send it to me so I could have some fun with it. And so I haven't got it to the table yet, but I plan on getting it to the table in a couple weeks here and playing the heck out of it while I have it. And because Conquest Princess is one of the best games that I played last year. Now, of course, I've only played the preview version. So looking forward to the final edition that's coming out in the summer that I backed that game. So looking forward to getting the actual production quality version of that game. But I'll have some fun with the preview copy for a little while. And then last, I'm previewing Galactic Cruise. Galactic Cruise is coming to Kickstarter next week. So I'll likely be talking about that in my next podcast, but I'm going to tell you right now, Galactic Cruise is a solid game. If you're looking for a Euro game that is, you know, oddly very thematic, I, I find that it's more thematic than I expected it to be. It feels like you are managing a Galactic Cruise company as you're trying, you know, to develop the different technologies, outfit your ships, your shuttles. Uh, to have different, you know, amenities and that sort of thing. And then advertising to get people to join in on your cruise and then sending them on the cruise and scoring all sorts of points. And it, you know, boasts a nice solo mode. It's got a customizable difficulty for the solo mode, which I find great. Now, I found the solo mode early on to be easy, but as you customize it, you can customize it in three different areas and you can make it easy, medium, or hard in each of those three different areas. So you can do your own way of customizing the solo mode and I find it's fantastic. It, it's, a, it's a great resource management Euro style game. And, and like I said, it's very thematic. And I find that the gameplay is just super smooth. The rules work really well. The gameplay though is a bit long. So you're looking at about two hours to play. At least that's how it's been for me for the first few times that I played. I, I'm looking at upwards of two hours and it's a little bit on the heavier side. I would rate it in the high three out of five. So, you know, those of you who are into heavier Euros will probably find, you know, that you like this kind of game. And of course, it's got Ian O'Toole's art, which I think was a fantastic choice. I think having him do the art in many of those types of Euro games really aids to, to make the game better. It, it just really does. His art is just that good. I, I think it's fantastic. I love his art in other games like Carnegie and Clinic Deluxe. So yeah, having his art in Galactic Cruise works out really well. I think Galactic Cruise is going to be a big hit. I have no doubt about it. So I'm very happy, you know, to see it succeed because I've been following it for over a year now, I think. Maybe even longer. And so that's it for the new games for me. Now the games I've been playing recently in the last week or two, uh, again with Galactic Cruise, you know, that's hitting the table a lot. And then I've been playing Mythwind and having a fun time with that. Mythwind is just, you know, fun sandbox adventure kind of Euro style game. Really enjoying that. I've also played Scholars of the South Tigris. Oh my goodness, that is a big surprise. Scholars of the South Tigris, I wasn't sure if I was gonna like the game, but as I played it, oh wow, it's actually really good. And it's really tight too. Like the economy of the game is super tight. I never felt like I, I ever had like, you know, enough resources. Like it's really super tight, has a really cool action selection. You know, even with you rolling dice, it actually works out well. 
you know, you would think that, you know, rolling dice and then choosing actions with the dice placement, that you would have some problems with that, but there's plenty of mitigation, there's plenty of ways to use the dice, and so yeah, it works out really well. The AI is super smooth, easy to run, very challenging to beat. The AI is not easy, so uh, yeah, it, it's a challenging game, and, and I really enjoy it. it. It's really good. There, there are some rules and iconography issues in the game. You know, some of the rules aren't as intuitive as I'd want them to be, so I had to spend, you know, some time flipping through the book. And then, of course, the iconography, some of the icons weren't so clear, or you have to flip through the book to find them. And so, yeah, there's some issues there, but as you're playing, you'll get used to them after a little while and you won't have to search so much. But yeah, Scholars was a big surprise and I'm really happy to be reviewing that. I should have a review out later this month, but it's going to be high. It's going to be really good. Yeah, I, I think it's one of the best games to come out last year. And then I also played Tucana Builders. Now, Tucana Builders is from the designers of Revive. It's a, you know, a tile lane game where you're trying to uh, connect huts and sea animals and you do, you build out these tracks and you try and score points that way there's two different scorings during the game the thing about the game is like you draw a card and it tells you what terrain you can put the tile on and you draw a tile from the bag blindly and you don't really have much choice i found it too a little too random it's it's missing something now one of my friends suggested that i draw two tiles and choose to play one each turn and you know refill it back up to two every round and I think that would be better having that little extra choice I think would be better and I think that's the way I'm going to play I hate house ruling the game so early but I just found it to be a little too random and you know it, it was one too many layers of random to, to it and it just really didn't let me enjoy it it was more frustrating than enjoyable and then the last game I played was Guild Academies of Valeria now this is a really interesting game it has a really interesting dice drafting mechanic which is also your action selection so when you draft a die it's going to choose your action for you and then the value of the dice you know depending on if it's high or low is you know going to affect what you do and yeah it's all about building out this guild like this magic guild you know think like harry potter or something like that where you have the school of students and you're trying to train them and then graduate them and then after you graduate them you send them on quests and as you're training them, see the, the students are the dice, you're going to be increasing their levels and then gaining other resources. You can use the magic resource to even increase them further. And then you can spend some of the other resources or coins on you know different other actions. You can also upgrade your actions. There's a lot of really cool things going there. It's a little long and I think slightly convoluted for what it is. You know, which is a surprise for me. It's, you know, Stan Kordonsky's design, and I, I love his designs. I love Resurgence, and I love Nova Roma. And so this one, I'm not sure, you know, I, I'm not sure how I'm going to rate this one because I'm going to review it later this month. And right now, I'm just saying it's decent. I don't think it's spectacular, but I've thought that about his games before, and the more I play his games, the better they are, <laughs> at least in my opinion. And so maybe that will be the case for this one so i'm going to give it a few more plays before i review it but my initial plays felt you know it just made me feel like it, it was an interesting game had some cool concepts but didn't wow me all right and so that's it for the games i played now i actually played more games than that but i'm running out of time here and so i don't want to keep you too much longer here but you have to let me know if any of those games you know either the games we talked about in crowdfunding or any of the new games i received or any of the games I played, any of those interested you. Also, remember that I have all the links for all those games in my description, so if you want to check out those games, I'll have links there. But I'm definitely interested in your thoughts on this podcast, on those games. Also, let me know which games did you back. Did you back any of those games, or did you back something else? Or are you going to back Galactic Cruise when it comes out next week? And once again, I thank you for joining me on Tabletop for One's podcast, and I hope you have a great night.